Hi and welcome back to Tech Your Game. Today we're going to talk about Google Groups and what Google Groups can do for you to help improve the communication on your team and help you delegate some of that communication to your assistant coaches and team leaders. Heck, maybe everybody on your team. Today on Tech Your Game. Okay, today we're going to talk about Google Groups, and this is a not well-publicized part of Google, but I think a very useful one for you, depending on your demographic. And what I mean by that is Google Groups is only available to Gmail people. Now, as we've talked about before in our videos, the school systems have kids on G Suite right now. Half of them out there and probably your kids are have a school email account that is a Google uh, G Suite account. And so they're already on that. And what you can do other than having your own contact list, which only you can access and only you can maintain, is you can use Google Groups to enable a lot of different things. Well, mostly communication amongst your team that you're not always the one that has to take care of. So if you've ever been a coach and had somebody ask you, hey, can you send out a message to the team about X? Or can you send out a message to the team about Y? The answer is always yes, I can, through pretty much any means. But the better answer is how can I get that done by me not doing it and you doing it. And that's what Google Groups can do for you. So we're gonna go and find Google Groups and I'm just gonna use a regular private account. Okay, I'm gonna, we can look, we're gonna look at both, but I'm gonna look and show you just from a private user. Say you're a coach who's outside the school system. So to create a group, okay, first of all, if you need to, if you need to help people create Google accounts, they can just go to accounts.google.com and they can sign up for a new Google account. Remember, it is free, and it gives you access to all of the Google apps that we're gonna talk about in these videos. So you can go right here, you can just fill in your information, or not looking for your credit card, uh, and you can just get a free account. So send people there if they don't have one and they wanna be part of your group. Other than that, you're gonna go into to email, Okay, and you're going to go up here to the right, the waffle, like you always do, and you're going to look for what apps are available to you. Well, Google Groups is not there on the first page, so you go to More. We're going to click on More, and it's not on that page. So go to Even More from Google, and what loads up is... Of course, all the Google products. Many you probably never even knew about. This is a good place to go to look for what is available to you. But if you keep scrolling down and you go all the way down here, you're going to find Google Groups. So click on Google Groups. And what that allows you, what it brings up is a page that looks exactly like this, at least at this time right now with Google and you're going to create a group I'm going to create a group I'm going to call this the tech your game group and as you notice as I typed in tech your game a group email address came up right here tech your game at googlegroups.com now I can give it a description and put a language in there, depending on what country you're in. Um, group type. There are four different types of groups. Mostly what you're gonna to wanna to do is just send email out to everybody who joins this group. And we're gonna show you how to do that in a second. But you could also create a forum. And in the forum, you create topics, and people can, from inside the group, can weigh in on that topic. So if it's about a certain aspect of your, your game or a certain aspect of practice or a certain aspect of your leadership group or whatever, 
Okay, you can put in a Q&A form. You can create a parents group where if parents have questions, they can just share those questions with other parents out there. And that way you don't get asked the same thing every time. Create the Q&A form. Topic, conversation. Everybody in there joins. Somebody might have the answer and you don't need to have it. But then there's a collaborative inbox for you and your coaches. We're just going to create an email list, okay? And then there's the basic permissions that you're going to cre you're going to allow all members of the group. Managers of the group uh, can view topics. Uh, all members of the group can view topics. Owners of the group obviously can view topics. Post. Owners of the group can post. Managers of the group can post. And at this case, all members of the group can post. You may not want this right away. You may uncheck that and say, you know what, I'm going to assign my managers. And you can do that. We're going to sh show you how you can do that. And then select who can join. Anyone can ask or only invited users or the public. You're still going to manage who's in this group. Okay, so we're going to leave that select who can join. And we're going to create the group. Click on create. It's going to ask you to tell them you're not a robot. It's going to do things like this to verify that. Uh, and we have created a group. Congratulations, your group Google group has been created. Now, at this point, you can do a couple of different things. You can invite people to join the group. You can customize your group settings, which we've already looked at a little bit, and add a topic and start posting. First of all, we want to invite people to join it. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can do enter the email addresses in here. You can do a direct ad where you fill all of them in from a list. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back one level and it gives you some options. You can link to your Google Plus profile. I don't choose to do that. I don't really want to have them looking at my profile for Google Plus, but I do want to put in a nickname so they know who is going, who is they're talking with as they're going through conversations. So I'm going to put in Coach Limpert, how will I look to others, don't really care, use that icon and then I can add a welcome message to the group and put that there. I'm going to look at join requests and right here it shows in my personal account Paul Limpert at gmail.com I click on it and then I can approve the applicant from there. So that's a way that if you don't know everybody's email addresses and you've created a Google site, you can just go ahead and put out a join request there. They can click on it and then you can apply. And now the members of the group include, in this case, these two people. Okay, so that's a way to get started. Now, inside of the group, what does this help you do? Well, there's a lot of things. Okay, you can create inside of your Tech Your Game group, a new topic. So whatever the topic is, say, lacrosse team meeting. You want to start a discussion, display it at the top, block it. You want to attach a file to put something in from your computer that, that's pertinent to that meeting. Then you can go ahead and grab a file. Maybe it's just a picture file and you open it up and you load it in and select it and it's going to show up. And then you can put your text in. Team meeting notes are provided here. Okay, and then they get the file, they get the notes, and they get an email. Go ahead and post it. Okay, so this is going to go ahead and post, and it starts a thread right here, and it has a title on it, Lacrosse Team Meetings, shows who it's created by, and it goes out to everybody in the group. Now, how many times you want to see that is really up to you. I'm going to go back to my private account. I'm going to look at it from that side. 
Okay, and we'll go into my groups, tech your game, and there it is. Right, this is in my private account. Cross team meeting, it shows this picture. Team meeting notes are provided here. Of course, I probably wouldn't provide a picture if I was going to do team meeting notes, but you get the point. I would put a file in there. They'd be able to open up and read the file, and then they could reply to it. Okay, you reply right inside the meeting. Reply privately to the author or to everybody in the group if you decide to do that. Okay, you have to excuse me for a second because what I had to do was add more people into the list. Now, so now I have a third person in the list. When I click on lacrosse team meeting, if I want to reply, I post a reply. I come in here and say, got it, no problem, and I post it. Now, you wouldn't want to do that. You, should, you want your kids and you want your team members to add value here. You don't want them to know that they got the message. You assume they got the message because Google's reliable that way. But let's just say we did that. Post a message to the group. I'm going to go over to my, go back to my private account. Look at that team meeting note. All right, refresh the screen. And I see it down here. Coach Limpert says, got it, or no problems. Okay, and that's came in from my other account, which was also Coach Limpert, but you get the point. It starts a thread here until the whole team meeting message thread is done, okay? And this can continue to grow. Somebody can put their own notes back in here. They can add to it, like, any number of iterations. Now, what does this do for you as a coach? Well, it is just like email except for one big difference in my mind. When I add my assistant coaches into this list and I give them rights to manage the list, and when I add team leaders into this list in all of my team, and I give the team leaders the rights to add, if I happen to, if somebody happens to have a message they need to get out to the whole team, and that's a trusted person on your team, they just go into the group and send the message. They have the email. They have the email to this group. Okay, and it is your tech your tech your game group. And they'll just send it to the tech your game group address. It goes to everybody in the group. Okay, now if you want to manage your settings, membership and email settings, you can just go into manage. All right, link to your profile, no email used for your membership. That one, delivery preference, right here. This is key because you'll end up getting a whole lot of emails instantaneously. Sometimes don't send email updates. You might want that. And you can go in manually and check your group messages. Send daily summaries. I do that for some of my groups because I only need to know what happens on a daily basis there. Send combined updates, 25 messages per email, or notify me every time. You probably want your players to get into the notify every time. Um, but depending on the use of your list, if it's a forum, if it's a Q&A, you might just check that once a day. And you don't want to get emails in your inbox continuously throughout the day from everybody in that group. All right? You're going to set up a time. So you would, send, you would change those settings here so that the delivery to you is how you want to get it. But keep in mind, if it's a group page that you set up or a group that you set up that has information that needs to get out instantaneously, you want to make sure all your group members understand that that's the purpose of that group. There are other services that are free, like Google, that do this. Remind uh, is a, a service, remind.com. Uh, but it's it's again outside of Google. It's limited in the two-way traffic. It's also limited in the usability. So for your team's group message interaction, Google Groups, as long as everybody has a, Google, a Gmail account, is a great way to get information out on a timely basis and to be able to delegate it to your assistant coaches, team parents, team leaders, whoever for each group, whoever is a responsible person that way it's not always you that has to do it and 
when it comes to remind, you're pretty much the guy that has to do it. When it comes to sending out emails from your contact list, it's your contact list. All right, in this list, people can unjoin, you know, they can leave the group, and people can be added to the group at any time and get the information that's going on inside the group. So I hope this helps you delegate some of your responsibilities, but at the same time, have the access to manage the traffic. You can go in here and you can kick people off the group. You can restrict what they can do if they're not using it responsibly. Uh, those things happen and they happen everywhere. But overall, what a great way to communicate and be able to delegate some of that communication to people that you're trying to help build into leaders of your organization. I, I just think that's the big point. That's the big bonus for me. I hope you use it. Get a group out there, test it out with a smaller group, maybe just your coaches, see how it works, and then implement it with your team. Make sure they know how to use it, give them some directions, and you're gonna find your life's a whole lot easier to manage when you can delegate these tasks to your team leaders and your assistant coaches. I hope that helps. Have a great day.